This tutorial will introduce you to the basics of TeamSpeak 3's all-new permission system. TeamSpeak 3 represents years of engineering experience in creating scalable VoIP solutions. When used properly, the permission system will allow you to dynamically create, define, and apply group permissions precisely as you see fit. This provides server administrators superior control and effective tools for managing and building social networks. If you're following along, be sure to pause this video as often as needed. This tutorial was recorded in high definition and is best viewed at 720p. To switch to high def, click on the 360p pull-up menu on the lower right area of the YouTube video control bar. Before we get started, let's point out a few requirements. This tutorial assumes you already have the TeamSpeak 3 client installed on your computer and that you have either set up your own server or you are renting one from an authorized TeamSpeak host provider or ATHP. It is also assumed that you are able to connect to your server as a normal user. In addition, some areas of this tutorial may require server admin privileges. If you do not meet these requirements, please refer to the following tutorials first, then come back to this tutorial. Okay, let's get started. Please note that at the time of this tutorial, TeamSpeak 3 was still in open beta and therefore, the video you are about to see may not reflect the latest version of the TeamSpeak 3 client. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is fire up my TeamSpeak 3 client and connect to my server. And right away, you should notice that I'm logged in as a server admin, designated by the S icon here. And my friends Epsilon and Theta are also logged into my server. If I left click on my nickname Alpha, you'll see that I'm a member of the server admin server group. And if I do the same for Epsilon and Theta, you'll see that these users are members of the guest server group. Incidentally, I want to point out that on this window pane, I can see that Theta is running a TeamSpeak 3 Beta 16 client, which is on a Windows platform, and I can also see the first and last time he connected to my server, as well as the total number of connections Theta has ever made to my server. Later in this tutorial, we'll also make use of Theta's unique ID, which is shown here. Next, I'm going to select Permissions, then Server Groups. And notice that the server groups we just discussed can be seen here on the left. The Server Admin group is selected by default, and on the far right, you'll see that Alpha is currently the only member of this group. If I click on the Guest Server group, Notice that you will not see Epsilon and Theta on the right as you might expect. This is because the guest server group is a special default group which users are automatically assigned to when they first log into your server. This group usually contains the most restricted access of all groups. Now, if you're a TeamSpeak 2 veteran, I want to take a moment to compare the differences between TeamSpeak 2 and TeamSpeak 3 server groups. So I'm going to launch my web browser and log into my TeamSpeak 2 web admin interface. And I would like to direct your attention to the server permissions groups in TeamSpeak 2 shown here. Note that the anonymous group in TeamSpeak 2 sort of corresponds with the guest group in TeamSpeak 3. The registered group in TeamSpeak 2 sort of corresponds to the normal group in TeamSpeak 3. And the server admin groups sort of correspond to each other as well. Similarly, if I click on the Channel Groups tab in TeamSpeak 3, the voice, operator, and channel admin groups sort of correspond to the voiced, operator, and channel admin groups in TeamSpeak 2. Now, the reason I use the words sort of 
is that this is about the only similarities I want you to recognize since you will soon discover TeenSpeak 3's permission system is far more powerful and complex than TeenSpeak 2's. For example, contrary to TeenSpeak 2, TeenSpeak 3 offers several new permission sets. Client permissions can be applied to one specific user or technically a user's unique ID. Channel permissions can be used to control the behavior of any specific channel. And if that's not enough, channel client permissions can be applied to one specific user or unique ID when that user is in one specific channel. Now, we won't go into further detail regarding these tabs or permission sets, but they will be discussed in a separate tutorial for advanced users. And on that note, I want to add that for most people, the Server Groups tab is the only set of groups and permissions you may ever need. I strongly recommend you first master creating, altering, and applying Server Groups permissions to your users before you dive into more complex scenarios. Also, for the final version of TeamSpeak 3, we are working on a Novice Mode and an Expert Mode to further assist you with mastering the permission system one step at a time. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the actual permissions assigned to the guest server group. In the center of the screen, there are several categories which help classify related permission sets together. If I expand the channel category, you'll see that this area contains permission sets which include creating, modifying, and deleting channels on the server. If I expand the create subcategory, you can further see that users belonging to the guest server group can create temporary channels and password protected channels. However, the guest server group cannot create permanent channels. So let's try to understand how these basic permissions will affect users in the guest server group. And let's put this to the test. Suppose for a moment that we're now looking at Theta's computer. And if you recall, Theta is only a member of the guest server group. So based on what we just discussed, Theta can right click, choose create channel, name it Theta's corner, and he can also add a password to that channel. However, Theta cannot select the permanent radio button down here because he does not have permission to do so. So Theta now clicks OK. Incidentally, a temporary channel means that when all users leave the channel, the channel itself will disappear, whereas a permanent channel will remain on the server indefinitely, regardless of whether or not there are any users within that channel. So Theta is going to move back to the lobby, and notice that his channel is now gone, because it was a temporary channel. Switching back to Alpha's computer, our server admin, let's suppose we want to upgrade Theta's access and give him the ability to create permanent channels. One way to do this is to simply right click on Create Permanent Channels and select Add Permission. But keep in mind that by doing so, you will be granting this privilege to all guest users on your server, which you probably don't want to do. So let's right click again and select Remove Permission. And let's take a different approach. The idea is that we're going to add Theta to the normal server group, which will have the ability to create permanent channels. So what we're going to do first is compare the permissions of the guest server group with those of the normal server group. Notice that the moment I click on the normal server group on the left, the create permissions assigned to this group are displayed in the middle section. So this is a great way to quickly compare the permission settings of two or more server groups. If I now click on the server admin group, you can immediately see that by default, server admins have the ability to perform all channel create functions. So let's click on the normal server group again. 
And notice that this group does not currently have access to create permanent channels. So I'm going to right click and select add permission here. Now all I need to do is add theta to the normal server group. There are several ways to do this. If I close this window and click on theta, I can see his unique ID here. I can then highlight it, right click, and copy. Then I can go back to permissions, server groups, and select the normal group on the left, and then click on the add button on the lower right, right click again, paste, and click OK. And now you'll see that Theta has been added to this group. So let me remove him for a moment. And close this window again. And now I can right click on Theta and choose Set Server Groups. And I can also click on Normal to add him to the normal group. I'm going to uncheck that again for a moment, close this window, and another way to add him is to go to Permissions, then Server Groups again, then select Normal, go back to my main window, and drag and drop Theta into this Clients column. Lastly, you can also add users to a server group even when they're offline by using your contact list. To demonstrate this, I'm going to close this window, then right click on my friend Epsilon, and select Add as Friend. Notice his username is now highlighted in green. Now let's suppose Epsilon goes offline. I can now go to Tools, then Contacts, right click on Epsilon, Select Copy Unique ID to Clipboard, close this window, then go back to Permissions, Server Groups, select Normal, then Add, right click, paste, and click OK. The next time Epsilon logs into the server, he will automatically become a member of the Normal Server Group. With this basic foundation, you are now ready to proceed to more advanced topics. To continue our advanced permissions tutorial, click on this dialog box. This concludes this video tutorial. Thanks for watching.